was a big step not tripping over that circle there. So we all love technology, obviously I do, and technology helps us stay connected in our lives, especially during the pandemic when we were sequestered and healing in place, we use technology to keep in track or keep track of our family and loved ones. We use things like Skype, Zoom, and other utilities in order to stay connected and allow us to see what our loved ones were doing. We also use social media. Technology is great also because it allows us to stay productive. It allows us to play. And you can tell from the many smartphone and tablet crackheads that you see out there. We embrace it enthusiastically, except when it comes to AI. Now, as you can see, Technology, as far as AI is concerned, isn't fully embraced by everyone because we have fears when it comes to AI. But did you know that at least 77% of the tech devices that you currently use have some form of AI? Probably didn't even realize that, did you? When you think of things like your smartphones when it comes to Siri and ask Google, that is AI helping you perform specific task. When you use tools like your Alexa home devices and your Google home devices, that's AI working. Also, when you visit specific websites and get chatbots that are helping you solve minor issues, that is AI working. But the unfortunate news with AI is that you have the godfather of AI saying, that we need to beware and be cautious of AI. We have tech innovators like Elon Musk saying we need to be cautious of AI. And unfortunately, it has created an aura of fear when it comes to artificial intelligence. Now, when you look at the word AI, artificial intelligence, you probably think that these machines that we deal with, such as Siri, such as Alexa, are living thinking things, and they're not. They don't have the ability to make independent choices as far as scenarios that they run into. They definitely don't have emotions when it comes to dealing with issues with other programs. Now, you're probably thinking like the old movie Tron, where Tron meets the girl and he gets away, but that's not how computer programs and AI work. Now, the sole purpose of AI platforms like ChatGPT and other AI forms is to help us stay more connected in our world and allow us to get away from our tech devices and allow us to enjoy the things that really matter in life, such as family and friends, colleagues, coworkers. That's the whole purpose of AI. But unfortunately, we have this image. And if you aren't familiar with this, This is HAL 9000 from the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey, which was created by Arthur C. Clarke in novel form. And if you've seen the movie, it was directed by Stanley Kubrick. Hopefully, I won't ruin the plot for you because we're talking about a 50-year movie, 50-year plus. But I hate to tell you this, HAL murders some people. And it is, well, not really scary, But it makes you think, can machines really do that? Become a living, thinking being that is able to make decisions where it comes to our human lives. And it's something that has scared society for over 50 years and has made a lot of money for Hollywood and for new movies. Because as you well know, there are other forms of bad AI out there. Now, this good fellow, Ash, from the 1979 Ridley Scott movie Alien, started out doing well. Ash was with the crew of the Nostromo. They landed on the planet, happened to pick up an alien life form, which then started systematically killing the crew. 
Now, everyone thought Ash was on board and was going to help out, but unfortunately, Ash was AI, and he was bringing the alien back to Earth. Now, obviously, Ash did not meet a good end, but again, this image, that movie, preys on our fears that the machines are definitely not on our side. Another good example of you Marvel Cinematic Universe fans is Ultron. In the comic books, Ultron was created by Hank Pym. But in the movies, it was Tony Stark and Bruce Banner that brought Ultron to life. Again, another sentient being that was created to protect humanity. But at some time, Ultron snapped. And he decided that humanity was the problem and that humans needed to be wiped off the face of the Earth. Ooh, scary, right? But it also makes big money. And it go another thing that goes to show that AI isn't necessarily here to kill us. Now, this movie I can't ruin the plot of, which is Megan. Fairly new, but another sentient AI that was created to protect humans that just went AWOL and started killing humans. And it seems to be the story of AI in our society, and that's why many people are reluctant to embrace AI. I can't speak too much of Megan because it's a fairly new movie, so I don't want to ruin the plot for those that want to go see it. But the good thing about Hollywood and media is that we have nice forms of AI. Who can forget R2-D2 and C-3PO? two of probably science fiction's comics and movies form of AI. Even though R2-D2 does not talk much and just beeps, he's always there to save the day, whether it be battling Yoda on the planet Dagobah or helping the Millennium Falcon stay safe after another malfunction to keep out of the hands of the evil empire. And C-3PO, it's what we want in AI and in technology a loving droid who will translate your every word, and the bonus is that C-3PO always addresses people as ma'am or sir, if you ever notice. That's what we want in AI. Another good example, especially if you're a kid, who would like to have their own personal robot like Will Robinson from Lost in Space? Robot was there at every step of the way for Will and the Robinson family. Now, unfortunately, and this may sound wrong, I never understood why Robot never took care of Dr. Smith. Did you? Dr. Smith was always causing the Robinson family problems, and Robot never did what he was supposed to do with, with uh, Dr. Smith. But again, a good, nice form of AI that protects us. So that should let you know that AI is here to protect us, and it's not the evil messages that we see or the evil images that we see of AI portrayed in novels and in movies. Just like Wally. Wally was stuck on Earth for 700 years trying to compact garbage. And I don't know, there must have been a dozen, hundred dozen Wallys with this how trashed Earth was. But Wally became aware, started collecting trinkets on Earth, and another excellent form of AI that is here to help. And that is the future that we're working towards. So everyone obviously has heard of ChatGPT. ChatGPT isn't alive. And basically, to explain it to all of you, ChatGPT is Google on crack. Plain and simple. You put in a request, ChatGPT does all the work for you. It searches the internet, and it finds the answers to the questions that are on your mind. Want a recipe for chocolate chip cookies with a splash of rum? Ask ChatGPT. It will bring it to you. If you wanted to know the top five things to do in New York City or any other major city, you can ask ChatGPT, and it definitely will bring it to your fingertips. But ChatGPT relies on the Internet so much that it's inaccurate. And even if you were to ask ChatGPT what its sole purpose was, it's entertainment. So those of you that see these words, ChatGPT, 
and think job loss. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be out of work. Chat GPT is going to ruin my life because I'm not going to be able to work because of AI. Simply not the case. Chat GPT is still in somewhat a beta form. And again, it isn't thinking of these questions or answers to the questions that you ask. It's not Karnak the Great. It is just pulling information off of the internet and delivering your response in an easy, human-like form. So for those of you out there that are fearing chat GPT and other forms of AI, it's still in its infancy, and it's nothing that you have to worry about as far as your job, your quality of life degrading, but it is here to help us get away from those devices and to embrace life to its fullest. Now, the relationship between AI and human beings has always been one that has coexisted. I mean, has anyone read any stories about an AI that has become evil and got into your bank accounts and stolen all your information? That's humans that do that. That's not AI. Now, keep in mind, AI makes cyber criminals' jobs a lot easier when composing phishing emails and even creating voice cloning and AI facial deep fake scams. That's humans. But the relationship has always been reciprocal because AI is here to help. Now, when it comes to us as human beings, we should never worry about technology replacing us. Because currently, we have two satellites that are out on the outer edge of the solar system, and we did it without any form of AI. And I'm talking of Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. And there's other satellites that orbit our Earth that we as human beings created without the help of AI. Great brains like Kathleen Johnson helped propel man around our Earth and to the moon and back with no problem and with no help of AI. Now, when it comes to AI and when it comes to humans, we definitely need to put a hold on AI for the simple fact that we need to be and develop our children to become a little bit more creative in their task. Now we are kind of in a society where kids are using ChatGPT to compose papers and other literary works, and it is a problem, and people are stopping it. So again, don't worry about the aspect of AI taking away from your human experience. Understand that AI is the foundation that will take us to the next level when it comes to the evolution of technology and other things in our life that we need to change. AI is that stepping stone that we can use to say, we have a question. What ways can we think outside the box to give an answer to the question? Or we have a problem. What can we do to solve that solution to that problem? But we have to continue to not focus on AI so much that it affects our young minds of our children to ensure that they are creative and innovative in their choices. Now, it sounds like a good scenario, right? AI is going to take over like Skynet. That ain't happening because in the Terminator universe, that actually happened in 1997 when Skynet, the sentient evil AI in the movie Terminator, went live. So we, we can't worry about that. We're past that point. So stop thinking. It's here. It's going to take us all over. I mean, it would be cool, in my opinion, to see um, steel skeletons walking around with machine guns. That would be pretty awesome. But I wouldn't want them shooting at me. For me, it would be more entertainment, like Boston Dynamic Robots that you've seen on videos that are dancing and doing the twist and doing things that I couldn't even imagine doing with my own body. That's the cool aspect of it. But our imagination will always rule over AI. It has taken us to literary places, it has taken us to theatrical places, and it's taken us to places in our life that we never thought of. Who would think that you would be able to stand in a room and have a conversation with someone across the planet? That was unheard of. But again, that's human ingenuity. That's not AI ingenuity. That day may happen, but we're not at that day yet. So in closing, I want you to think of fears as this. So in the movie Blade Runner, Roy Batty, who was being pursued by Harrison Ford's character, Deckard, 
had a speech, and it's called the Tears and Rain speech. And in that speech, Roy Batty laments that he's coming to the end of his life and that all of the experiences and memories that he had will be lost like tears and rain. And it so happened, if you've seen Blade Runner, it's raining in the scene, so it's appropriate. But when it comes to our fears about AI, when it comes to our fears about technology, we need to get into the mindset that those fearful thoughts about AI, about technology, about losing our jobs, are lost like tears in the rain. We need to wipe our eyes and dry our tears and focus on the sun and the positivity of what the future of AI brings. Trust me, it's not going to put you out of work. It's not going to ruin your life. But what it will do is enhance your life and allow you to live a fuller life, one that's more meaningful, and one that's going to definitely give you substance. So take that with you, and I appreciate you allowing me to speak to you today.